What's going on guys, Sunny aka The Random Recorder here, and as someone still in school, something I always dread is when my teachers assign me reading. And yet, Shakespeare remains one of the only writers I've actually enjoyed, which kinda sucks, cause it means my teachers haven't been overhyping him for years, he just sort of is that good. Out of the plays I've read of his, my favorite so far has been Macbeth. I think one of my favorite things that I did while studying it was watching recorded stage versions of it with my friends, and something I always found interesting was just how different various versions of it could look. When a play director adapts something, and the same goes for the numerous film directors that have done Macbeth, you have to take the written script and imagine it in reality. That means that version by version, costuming set, and arguably most importantly, line delivery and acting choices differ. What beast was it then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst to do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. None. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. You... And when I first saw the trailer for Joel Cohen's The Tragedy of Macbeth, I was instantly hooked on his ideas. It looked deliciously cinematic, expertly lit, not to mention the perfect casting of Denzel Washington as Macbeth himself. So this past weekend, I went ahead and watched it with Numen and Carlos. And it turns out I didn't really like it at all. It's not all bad. Alex Hassel redeemed himself for an embarrassing outing in Netflix's Cowboy Bebop, mushy, mushy. and seeing another movie in black and white 4x3 reminded me of how Zaddy Snyder really is the blueprint honor. for all filmmakers today. We live in a society. On a real note, the lighting shadows and set design are terrific, and I'll give it that credit. Inverness, Macbeth's castle, has never felt this mystifying and all-consuming. It feels like such a perfect setting for a murderous tale to take place, especially because the movie almost never gave me a proper geographical read with so many long, barren corridors and dramatic halls and yards. It's like the anti-Hogwarts. It ends up feeling somewhere in between an actual film set and a theater play set, which I think is really interesting. I love it. But going back to my point on the way that plays have ever-changing interpretations that inform how they're adapted, I think Cohen really messes up expressing and intensifying Macbeth's internal conflict, which you need for something like this. A big part of that is how he interprets dialogue. Far too much of this feels like really fast whisper shouts and just exceedingly low-key performances. It's weird because some of the stuff that's supposed to be really high tension and stressed, like Duncan's murder, are great in themselves, but it's hard to believe Lady Macbeth would be so angry at Macbeth for doubting himself when the whole conversation where they resolved to murder Duncan felt way too low energy and downplayed for its significance in the story. The camera work also feels a little weak here too. It's almost entirely static shots with the primary camera movements being push-ins. Apart from that being a little stale on the visual side, it's really odd when you're trying to sell me on the fact that the main character here, by the end of the story, is an insane and nihilistic tyrant. There's such a paltry use of handheld shots and Dutch angles which would convey without question Macbeth's insanity, and yet they never really come into play here. You could argue it's Cohen sort of bringing to life that weathered mental state of a Scottish soldier conditioned to show no emotion, but there's still far too many solo monologues and more intimate scenes that lack emotion when they're supposed to be direct portals into a character's mind. Like you're doing Shakespeare, chew the scenery like it's your last meal, dude. Get the camera convulsing and get at such ridiculously extreme angles that it barely makes sense. But none of that ever happens. At the end of the day, it's not a terrible movie or anything, a crime against Shakespeare's work, it's just not an adaptation that I think fully understands the play, or at least one whose direction I personally didn't like. It's odd, because this is definitely high effort, and a lot of care was put into it, but it just really doesn't work. It's all sound and fury, signifying nothing. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like. And if you loved it, hey, consider subscribing. If you like The Tragedy of Macbeth or want to talk about other versions and adaptations, feel free to leave a comment down below. I've yet to watch Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, but it's the one I'm looking forward to the most, and the one I'll probably watch the next. At any rate, that's gonna be all for today, guys. Random Recorders, peace out, and make sure to take care of yourself.